And at the first uh, words we hear from St. Paul today, there is no need to worry. And you listen to it and you think, well, yes, well, that's easier said than done, isn't it? And in all manners and all uh, spheres of our life. And when I was growing up, the parish priest at the time, um, you might remember him, uh, Father Connolly, Father Felix, used to say that to worry is a sin. And I never used to sort of understand that. To worry is a sin. Because we cannot help but worry. And I was thinking about that, that, that word, worry, in that first reading today, on lots of sorts of different levels, on the levels of uh, the worrying as we tune into the news to uh, watch the latest developments in, Ukra in Ukraine, the, 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 the violence and the war that's um, uh, unfolding before our eyes, and also it becomes more and more oh, damn, specific, specific, particular, as we focus in on ourselves. And the word to worry that, the, that St. Paul uses is the word that literally means, according to my uh, Greek dictionary on my phone, to be divided into parts, literally to go to pieces. And where do we hear that? But yesterday, where we were talked about how the devil seeks to fragment, to pull to pieces. Isn't that interesting? And so Father Connolly wasn't far from the truth, was he, when he said that worrying is, is the work of the devil, worrying is a sin. I suppose that when we worry, we focus in on that which is not the good part, the bad part, the struggle, the, the, the darkness, if you like to quote Doctor Who, to, and we entertain that darkness. And of course, we are challenged, aren't we, by the good news, and we know, and we know as we journey through Lent to Easter to, the, to see the Paschal candle lit again, that light always penetrates through the darkness, that no matter how dark things seem, no matter how much all hope seems to be lost, there's always that little flicker of light and that flicker of light which disperses any darkness. It's one of my favorite parts of the year. And slowly, and it's at Easter Vigil, and slowly but surely, we all take a bit of that light. All we light our candles from that one source, and before you know it, the whole building is ablaze. Not caught on fire, I hope. I mean, all of us lighting candles ablaze. And so, this is... Uh, uh, what we are to focus on as we pray for Ukraine, to uh, prayerfully deal in our own ways, to offer to the Lord that those dark, the, the darkness that is unfolding, but not to give in to that worry. Because, uh, because if there is anything you need to pray for, ask God with prayer and thanksgiving, we are told. Then the God of peace will be with you that God will work through, will bring that beacon of light into even the most darkest of times. Let us continue to pray, to hand over everything, hand over our frustrations. And you know, I was listening to the gospel where it talks about love, hating, uh, loving your enemies. And I know that's sort of easier said than done, isn't it, when we reflect upon all that is going on. But even those struggles and tensions, even perhaps our inability to comprehend, to work out, this is what this holy hour is for today, to leave everything there, to place it before our Lord present on the altar. There is no need to worry, but if there's anything you need, pray for it, asking God for it with prayer and thanksgiving. Amen.